Hey, please support this very small channel with a sub and a like. Thank you. Disclaimer, English is not my first language. That's all. Tisa the Joyful is a mixed bag for a lot of people. The gameplay is repetitive and lack variation. It lacks memorable bosses, not saying that it doesn't have any, of course. The world isn't as expensive as painful and many other complaints people have with the game. In the end, I think it did a good job as a DLC of Painful, a short quick game that answered a lot of questions. The story is quite good too, ignoring the other aspect, but at last, it is a far product from perfection that is painful. Fast forward to February 14, 2022, the trailer of Lisa the Joyful Growing Pain was released, and damn, it looks good. By the way, if you don't know, the Growing Pain is a mod that plans to overhaul all of Joyful, adding a lot more content, atmosphere, battle, and most importantly, music. Even from the trailer and screenshot of the game, you can already tell that it's going to be good. The focus of this video is to analyze and break down the trailer bit by bit. Cause hell, surely the dev didn't just put random scenes in there. My name is Fan, and today I'm going to analyze the Lisa the Joyful Growing Pain trailer. In the first scene, we see Buddy climbing down the rope in her cave. There is a weird purple mark or holes on the left side which seems to be just for decoration. But what is special about this scene is the door right below Buddy. If you look closely and increase the brightness, there seems to be a purple, purple flower. With this information, I think it's safe to say that this is probably an entrance to Mr. Beautiful's territory, or something close to that. In the next scene, we see the new and improved Vega territory. There is more picture about this on the devs twitter if you're interested. Besides that, it looks great, got nothing to say about it. Then, two new areas, an abandoned gas station and a winter forest area. Maybe the abandoned gas station will be sub area to land this main territory because, you know, gas and stuff. While the winter forest area seems to be just a sub area to Mr. Beautiful's main territory. I assume this because if you look closely at the ground's texture, it's, it is the same as the one in the Pacifist's territory. After that, there is a scene of midnight church with a greenish atmosphere to it. First, I thought that this is a brand new area, but after some consideration, I am pretty sure that this is the new Cindy's area. There's even the small gallows on the left side. There is also a church with a bloody mark that said gone hungry. Uh, I wonder what this means. Also, the mutant looks sick as fuck. Now, now, this is where it get interesting. Now, you see this place in the Ochi Joyful is an area connecting the first cr crossroad to the second one. Looks like the Joy Gang has taken control of it, knowing that the three strongest gang are either busy or in ruins. They create a settlement in the nick of an eye, which is nice. It's good to see the Joy Gang actually do something significant in the game, like in Painful. Here we have the new look of the Pacifist territory. I absolutely love violet flower covering the mud hut. I think the flower there is orchid. It is makes sense if it does. Orchid symbolize love and beauty overall. Can't wait to turn this lovely flower red if you know what I mean. Hey, hey. Now we jump from the most Pacifist to the most brutal in a second. Big L with his new motel. I think I need to mention how suitable most of the graphic change is. They are detailed yet don't stray away too much from Austin's original style, at least in my opinion. It gave like a some type of sequel kind of feel, you know? Like this is a sequel to Painful instead of this a DLC. Now, the next one, uh, the Fishmen are back. At least I assume they are. Or probably we are just simply just exploring an abandoned cave. 
That aside, if you look closely at the picture, you can clearly see Buddy being given a crown while a group of fishmen are around her. But not just that, on the left, you can see a group of other fishmen looking over what seems to be a splash of water. I think this picture is symbolizing fishmen's plan to go outside the world once Buddy is done with her goal. How did they know about Buddy's plan and decide to make her the king? Well, we will find out when the game's release. Next, we got the confirmed addition of Pain Mode. I wonder just how much of a difference and how much content this mode will add. Other than that, I got nothing to say. Continue. Next, we got Buddy and Basil riding motorcycle on the pink sky with a mutant running below them. It is nice to see that mini games like this are being added back to Joyful and with far more challenge than just a rock. Also, the main antagonist of Painful becomes a party member. Now, I love this idea. Not only does this make sense to the story, but also this can serve as a solid bridge for that scene in the end of OG Joyful, where Basil sacrificed himself, making it much more meaningful as we get to spend more time with him and learn about him. But of course, this depends on the death, but I'm sure they won't miss such an obvious chance. Also, notice how Rando isn't there. I theorize that Basil will be a replacement to Rando once he leave. He's going to be our party member for the second crossroad, just like how Rando is our party member for the first crossroad. I'm sure there is something more if you if you choose the right dialogue, but I theorize that in one of the branching path this game features, it's going to be just like that. Okay, next is uh uh <coughs> Pass. 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 Smash. Next we have Patty and Randall casually talking to someone in a cage, probably doing an interrogation. The place seems to be an abandoned minimark, so I would assume that this is in Vardy's area, but an important part in this picture is Rando's hand. You can see blood covering it. Looks like Buddy has forced Rando to do something he doesn't want to. Also, what scar does he talk about? I think it's Buddy's face. Looks like this dialogue is supposed to play if they're not using the mask or he could just be talking about Rando's hand. And next, we got one of my favorite parts in the trailer, that being the brand new Vega Indoru. It's just filled with personality, god damn. You know, I was pretty confused with Vega's role as one of the main warlords of Eastern OA. There is nothing memorable or special about him. Like many other Lisa fans, I think he's just a carbon copy of how Hollywood. I hope Growing Pain change this and give him an actual role because from what I see in this picture, he looks like someone that is a genius at winemaking. Perhaps a connoisseur of booze. He is the one that made the recipe for good booze with simple ingredient, then made Vardy's gang deal with the production and delivery across the OA. That is why he got such a high rank. But in all honesty, that seemed like a stretch. Maybe I was overthinking it. But hey, you gotta admit that is not a bad idea. The next scene showed the downside of the connecting area that the trailer showed earlier. This is a, another small scene that implies a lot of things, like what about Rando's cutscene? It seems that's going to get removed entirely and be replaced with something, or perhaps Rando will just simply not die, or maybe Rando does die the same way and the world just progress like, like nothing happened at all. Whatever it is, I definitely up to Rando living. And now, the next scene shows the three students of Brad Armstrong fighting a joy mutant. Look at how much they have grown to be sufficient killers and warlords. There's one thing I want to focus though, do you see Rando's name? It's changed to Destiny now, but if you saw a screenshot of the game uploaded by the dev on Twitter, you will clearly see the name still being Rando. So being the nerd I am, I start theorizing, and if this is not a graphical error or something the dev haven't added yet when sending that screenshot, it is possible that Buddy in the early game see Rando as more of an ally to be used for her conquest even after he revealed that he is her stepbrother. But as time went on, she grew more attached to him and start seeing him more as her brother, stepbrother. Also, the reason Rando joined back, maybe, was because Basu being there. He knew how much of a threat Basu is and joined to protect Buddy unconditionally. 
And now we have this scene, where Buddy reads notes from an underground side of a mud hut. There's a lot of detail here, like the joy pills, the blue walls, the blue flowers. At first I was confused about what the text meant, but then I realized this is simply the house of the mutant we saw earlier in the trailer. Looks like he lost control of himself a long time ago and started to enjoy. Poor guy. Then we have Buddy and Rando fighting one of the big Alice guys. Like many other scenes, it seems like there is nothing special here besides Rando being there, but if you look closely at the HP Rando has and compare it to the earlier scene, you can see that he has significantly less HP. Alright, hear me out. This might come as a far cry with how little we have seen so far, but what if that battle scene earlier happened in the end game? Like really really end game. Like they are fighting a mutant, right? What if the trio Armstrong got together to confront Yatu and Yatu, seeing how much of a threat they are, sent an army of mutant to them and the mutant they are fighting in this scene is one of them. This game features multiple story paths and oh please let this be one of them. And also, bloody hands. And then we have another motorcycle scene with Rando joining the crew and the mutant gun from sight. The detail of the mutant gun makes me think that this is that this mini game is replayable. But other than that, I had nothing to say. Also, Rando hand is still bloody. This game features a few branching pet, I believe, and looks like if you see this picture of Rando and Buddy fighting dice goons from the devs Twitter. Look at that. Rando's hand being bloody will be an important choice factor in the game. Or that is simply just from an earlier build and the dev haven't thought of it when they uploaded the bit. <laughs> now next we see little Basso's flashback. And this is modded content, right? Lisa doesn't actually say that in the original Joyful, right? If yes, then bravo. She looks extra manipulative with just that two simple sentences. Definitely a small change I look forward to. Then this scene, like another, I thought there is nothing to discuss until I, I read this dialogue carefully. I'm just here to enjoy the show. In the OG Joyful, Basu and Yadu knew that Betty will try her best to conquer the Eastern Olaid for herself and use her for that. So this is perhaps the show Basu talked about and it is a nice foreshadowing. Then the last scene, in a green church, probably a different different church than what we saw earlier because there is a mutant. We see Patty pretending to be the father. I mean, wait, why did a church even still exist and functioning? We literally use smart for currency. I'm, I'm just joking. This is the world of Lisa after all, anything is possible. Back to talking about this particular scene, one of the criticism Joyful had was that it was lacking dark, the dark humor Painful is known for. And I can see this being one of the humor aspects the dev added. Finally, we got to the ending. But before we end the video, I just want to say thanks to Mac00C or Magus. Well, thank you for creating this mod, alright? I'm really is not the best with compliments, so I can only say that these are amazing. I and many other Lisa fans will surely wait for the game, so take your time please. And now to my viewers, well I really hope you guys agree with some things that I say. And if you guys disagree with what I said or simply have something to say, please do so in the comment section. With that, I'm going to end the video here. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. See ya!